what, what is the idea, what is the musical idea behind four, two, four, uh, Rose Mountain Slow Runner? Well, I, I haven't been working with, I haven't been working with musical ideas for a while, but I've been working um, on my consciousness, on my mode of consciousness. And the result of the mode um, is the music. So that um, I have I have a, a, a task to, to do. And in the case of uh, Rose Mountain Slow Runner, um, I have to give up my intentions as far as the sounds are concerned. So that I'm listening, as I'm listening, um, if I if an intention arises, then I have to wait until I have no intention, and that then the sound changes from there. Uh, it comes it comes from an involuntary. Yeah. Does that allow for? Uh, does it allow for? Uh, an un, unmeasured silence. I mean, do, does does the initiation of 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 the sound that you make uh, come as a result of no intention? You have to reach a state of no intention. I have to reach it. I have to begin. I have to begin. But um, after the beginning, I mean, what what form of what form of uh, how do you attempt to reach that state of consciousness? Do you do Here's you do you work at that? I mean, is that intentional or is it based on some other mode? No, to 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 reach that mode of consciousness is intentional. I mean, so my uh, intention is is directed there, a will toward the task. And your 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 will is directed toward toward. Uh, reaching the state of consciousness out of which the music will come involuntarily? Yes. Right. Right. What... Hmm. Did you... Did you... Uh, did you come upon that state of consciousness uh, as part of your daily life and discover that it produced music or did you search for it? Well, it's it's a search and it's an ongoing search, but um, it, sort of, it comes from from uh, a task that I gave myself about 1957 as a result of listening to um, recorded environments where I would put a microphone in my window and record for the length of the tape and then play back, and I realized that I wasn't listening to very much, and um, so I gave myself the task of listening to everything all of the time and from that point, and reminding myself when I wasn't listening. And as I um, uh, became more and more aware of not listening mm -hmm. and bringing myself to listen, then I began to listen more inwardly as well as outwardly, so that there was a, an expansion both ways. Mm -hmm. um, I realized very slowly over a long period of time that um, the activity of performing or of framing a performance uh, and the intentions that uh, accumulate around that activity uh, produce a certain ang anxious kind of mode or or it can. They do, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. And um, I became bothered by that. I became bothered by the flurry that, of activity and how it, it tends to um, mask uh, yeah. so many things. For instance, all the sounds that we're hearing right now, the creaking and the fire snapping and so on. 
I feel that I mean that that's a part of the relationship that I have to to work with all of the time. So gradually, I realized that I had to um, to learn to bring that kind of listening into the kind of music that I was making, and that um, intending to do something produced a particular kind of feeling, and then there was a certain delay time. We seem to we seem to be governed by by now by that morality of by the by the morality of not wanting that feeling. I mean it seems to me that that uh, that that might be the reason we recognize you as an artist because you you make that you make that feeling clear to us, you know. But I think that everybody must. I mean, there must be a there must be a morality. Uh, don't you think there must be a morality producing producing that the antipathy toward that feeling that uh, that you wouldn't that you don't find in composers of say a uh, hundred years ago? You know what I mean? Seems like the people of I, I, from the music of a hundred years ago, you get the feeling that that music is is very often glorifying glorifying those anxieties. Don't you feel that? Well, I would I put it another way, I think, and that is that um, there was there was a clear the com- composer of a hundred years ago had a clear function. I mean, there's a to be anxious. <laughs> no, not to be anxious, but uh, the function of his work was clear. I mean, for instance, Bach. Yeah. And, in uh, in in the in the church, writing for the church, yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean certainly there was anxiety and uh, <laughs> yeah, coming out of the performances and so on. But the the function of the music was clear. Yeah, I no, I was suggesting that you know that people people must have valued that anxiety because you hear the anxiety in the music and and and. Uh, you hear the anxiety in the music, and you hear well. That must have been a valuable sort of feeling, you know, like like you say that beans were valuable to the Indians to eat, right? They must have been that. There must have been a valuable. A, there must have been a value to that feeling of anxiety in order to have it so much in the news, to have all the music be about anxiety. So if your music is, if your music is about a state of mind or, a, or a, yeah, a place in your consciousness where there's no anxiety, that you wouldn't have been, I don't think you would have been, you, you'd only be at home in this time, don't you think? I mean, don't you think that's very, that's very uh, natural for you to feel that way. Natural. I don't. I don't know because first of all, I think maybe the. Um, uh, I'm not sure I can agree with uh, the ideas that you've developed about yeah. anxiety, and that uh, anxiety being in the music. I think it is in certain uh, certain kinds of music. It comes through. It's, it's not in your music. No, no, I no, no, no I, I know you didn't mean that, but I'm mean yeah. projecting it in other music. I think that it has to be a little more specific, perhaps, to to understand what we're um, what we're talking about. But I'm I'm talking about uh, uh, the kind of performance anxiety that I uh, I had. Also, I think there was uh, an anxious kind of movement in the music that I wrote. Um, in the at the end of the fifties, yeah, thing. Uh, and that uh, all through the sixties there was sort of a, uh, a dissolving and uh, a working with that kind of yeah. anxiety, fragmentation, and, um, dissolution of tonality, say, and dis- dissolution of. Um, 
uh, musical materials that had uh, had come from from all of that uh, all of that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that um, I mean, there's there there are two things for me, and one is uh, the move into this this meditative sort of work, and uh, the idea of changing my consciousness, my own consciousness, as I work. Mm -hmm. And the other was the theatrical development, mm -hmm. where I began to, to work with uh, materials other than, than just sound. You know. And uh, it was a, a kind of way of uh, disorientation, disorientation of roles disorientation of the audience's role with the music, uh, a drawing of at attention away from simply uh, uh, sounding, mm -hmm. uh, a drawing of attention into the situation you know, and the boundaries of the situation. Yeah. Do you feel that? Do you feel that this situation that we're in right now is anxious? I mean, or is it? Was it achieved in a, in a in a way of meditation, a way of non-intention? Or um, well, certainly. I mean, the, our our particular interaction is one that's not. Um, it has a certain amount of premeditation, but there's no. Um, uh, there were no guarantees yeah. about how we would talk, what we would talk about, so that there was an um, establishment of a frame mm -hmm. and uh, um, a deliberate, um, deliberately, I would rather not know what what questions would come up, for instance. You know, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, order, have, I couldn't yeah. have imagined a question, you know, the, mm -hmm. other than the way we're talking now. Right in order to find what is in myself and what, what would come forth you know, at this point. And that's related very much, I think, to the way that I'm working, trying to, uh, to, to find what is, what is there, what is there, rather than uh, um, trying to guarantee some particular thing in advance. Why did, why did you, uh, how, how, is, how is your voice involved in, I mean, why, why did you choose in the area of sound that you chose? Mm -hmm. Well, because it's very direct. I mean, it's a direct uh, connection with the inner world. I mean, so this is where I can manifest what, what is occurring within myself without uh, uh, without a translation from my myself to an instrument say mm -hmm. although I'm using my accordion which has been part of my life for over 30 years yeah, the accordion you know. seems like part of you <laughs> yeah it, and it has become that um, but a, a lot of the work that I've been doing has been involved with uh, just vocal sounds the, the meditations, sonic meditations, so on. Yeah, I know that. I, I, I loved, I loved the welcoming piece that you, that you did here two years ago, I think. Here at Mills, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The greeting meditation. The greeting meditation, yes. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's funny, I thought of it as a welcoming. But that's, yes, it yeah. is a welcome because... Yeah. Um, it's such a beautiful effect, you know, when you come into that room, you think when you when you walk into the room and you hear the sound that the people are making because you walked into the room but you didn't know that it you think that you you're just walking in synchronously with the people making this beautiful sound so it's as if you found the sound you know yes. and everybody who walks in the room has exactly the same experience and That's you right. know that everybody sitting there is your is your 
friend and that experience, you know? Right. So it's so nice. Yeah. No, it's, it's interesting to, to see the different uh, times that it's yeah. taking place. And it is. It does work that way, exactly that way. And uh, I had thought of, I wondered, see, this, this greeting meditation is a, it's a key uh, meditation because I wanted to find a way uh, to change the atmosphere immediately, mm-hmm. you know, to, to set up a question immediately yeah. rather than a person coming in to, and uh, just normally going and finding a seat and sitting down and you know, waiting for everything to begin hmm. oh, how do you do how do you uh, how do you do that without uh, directing the person you know and, uh, and, oh. and this was this was the way to do it and I had a wonderful time recently when I went to um, Pennsylvania because I did a translation of the greeting meditation rather than focusing on a tone and then uh, singing as people can then, which is what it is, um, I decided to wave. And so every I was sitting on stage and every person that came in, I waved to them. And uh, the reactions were wonderful. You know, they'd come down the aisles and... You know, <laughs> Did it, me? Or did the audience, <laughs> or did you, or you alone wave? Yes, or this was my my solo. Uh, yeah. tra- did the audience at all at all get involved? I mean, the oh people, y- yes, as soon I mean as it had the same. Uh, did they do anything strange, like looking around? Yes, they're looking around, trying to figure out. Yeah. You, know, that, you didn't mean me. It was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's exactly it's exactly another version of that yeah. piece. Right. Right. Yeah. Why did you? Uh, why did you use? Why did you choose the name uh, uh, Rose Mountain Slow Runner? Rose Mountain Slow Run- Runner. And that's a long story. I want to hear it. <laughs> you want to hear it? You want to hear every word every, of it? Every word of the story. <laughs> I don't want you to spare me anything. <laughs> don't spare me one iota. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I'm happy. Um, <laughs> I am. I'm happy. You know how those people, you know, when you always say, oh, well, people who do music, when they do music, they get happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Go ahead. So, you, so you're doing music. I must be. I'm happy. That's what they've always told me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, okay, the, the, the song is nonverbal. Yes. There, there are no words. And uh, also, that's very, very important as far as that particular, this particular work is concerned, because somehow um, words are too specific, too specific, uh, but sounds are are more direct. Again, sim- simply sounds which are not uh, don't have the associations that, that words would set up. Um, so that it's more in the in I'm when if I'm successful in my task of giving up intention, the um, whatever emotional states I might be experiencing um, will come through in the in those sounds. So uh, the song uh, may change. It may change. Um, during the course of the song, as, as something may arise, or it may change from time to time. Right. Okay. Um, the song came as a result uh, of of various experiences uh, that I needed to to work with, and uh, it was a way of channeling. Uh, uh, feeling mm-hmm. and channeling it directly. Mm-hmm. Um, Rose Mountain uh, is the name of a friend, and Slow Runner is me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only one uh, one part of it. Uh, Rose Mountain is, of course, is a 
a beautiful image. Um, slow runner is ambiguous because there are runner roses. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the image then can can build, and it depends on your own uh, uh, reaction to it. But the title itself is a meditation then. But the, but the image for me is uh, uh, a mountain, which is uh, a spiral of roses, mm -hmm. slowly spiraling roses. It's funny how we're so much alike. I mean, I've, I've, always, I've, I've always thought of myself as a slow runner, too. <laughs> oh? Yeah, really. I mean, yeah. it's, it's true. I never yeah. realized that. When I was a, a teenager, I had a, a red corduroy hat. And on the hat band, it said... <laughs> on the hat band, <laughs> it that said... Means, that means you're telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we have that all arranged. Uh, I'm slow, but sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You gave me an amazing idea that when you were talking about the the hearing being direct, and uh, I mean the, the 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 sounds of the uh, music or the, of un, un, unarticul un, unarticulated sounds being direct and and the articulated ones being indirect. I was it it somehow suggested to me that. Um, if, if that's like the contrast of directness, relative directness between, say, smelling and tasting, you know, whereas smelling is supposed to be so much more direct than tasting, I, it just suggested that, that, that there might be sort of bands of of uh, of feeling in in our head structure that would put would put anything below here would would seem to be more indirect. Right? And anything right in here would seem to be direct. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course I mean most of the time I've spent trying to get out of my head. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so the most, the most direct <laughs> is, yeah. uh, seems to be from here. From yeah. Do you, uh, I, it seems silly to say this, but I want, do you listen to, uh, uh, to music by your, what is your, what is your relationship to, uh, other people's music now? How do you do that? How do you? Well, uh, it certainly isn't systematic. Mm -hmm. It's not systematic. It comes, um, from proximity. And it comes from. Uh, I, I I'm not interested in uh, trading tapes very much. <laughs> you know, I really I really find that that's not uh, a um, a viable way. Um, because so much of the it, it, so much of the work involves the presence. You know, the real presence of the person. Yeah. And um, you don't get that in the document. So, I mean, it, it's important to me to be wherever uh, the activity is taking place. And then part of the reason that you told me that you're doing the documentary is how uh, we've missed so much of each other's work. I know, I know yeah. You know? And uh, so that we're talking, we we uh, we know about various people and their activities. We hear, you know, there's legendary uh, commentary, and uh, uh, you hear descriptions. 
which are almost uh, more valuable than a recorded document. Yeah. The description I agree. and the I transmission agree. of the of the feeling of the event. So um, that's one way that I keep in touch with what other people are doing is through that network, that grapevine. Please be all right. You know, you know very well that um, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, then I may begin. Yeah. Thank you. So, have, have you have you considered a, a recently the idea of, of of trying to deal with with records or with the recording? Recording. I mean, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I it, it that that troubles me about this very thing that we're involved. That, in right that now. we're doing right now. It, it yeah. troubles me a lot. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Um, the thing is that I've I've never really I've never really tried uh, to push my work, yeah. you know, or to push my work through recordings. And I I have several recordings. Um, the only ones w which I'm really satisfied with are the uh, the two which are electronic pieces, and that the uh, the recording medium is the uh, is fairly good way of documenting that. But those were from the 60s, you know, the middle 60s. Mm -hmm. And um, the work that I've done since the middle of the 60s has been uh, less and less uh, suitable for recording yeah. because it simply takes place over such a, I mean, the space itself, uh, the theatrical activity, the presence, yeah. so on. It's very, very difficult, as you well know. Yeah. Um, to get a true, uh, truly good document, mm. and it, and also, I mean, realizing that that's exactly what it is—it's a document, and it's not uh, not the event. So, uh, I'm not particularly worried about preserving my work. I'm only I'm I'm interested in doing it, yeah. you know, and I'm interested in the event that we're uh, involved in. You know. yeah. And how how it can change me, or how how I can uh, learn about myself. Terrible. I feel terrible. Huh? Let's get used to this. It's not hurting. No, it isn't hurting. At least not physically. Yeah. Um, I'm interested, Bob, that you you said uh, yeah, you mentioned our likeness. Yeah. And. Um, I remember, oh, ten years ago or so, or more, when I was hearing about hearing about your work, and, and I used to feel, you know, I'd, I would listen to your titles, the titles of your pieces, and uh, like uh, public opinion descends upon the demonstrators, or yeah. some of the or the Wolfman. Yeah. Those various pieces. You were one of the only people I knew who were, were was using images for titles. Using images and so for I, pieces. Right, <laughs> and images for pieces. Yeah. And uh, I felt that that was a, a, a kindred 
sort of yeah. Uh, yeah. link between us. Yeah, I've always felt that very strongly. <clears throat> Do you think there's any there's any that there's any sort of um, state of mind or e e e emotional something that that you and a, and a, a number of other people I admire have in common? Uh, Like for instance, I would you, I might say that uh, this isn't true, but I, I for for if I thought about it, you might say that uh, well that your music would 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 for a while concern itself with sadness or or something like that, you know, some something that had kind of a, a verbal equivalent. Do you think about that? I mean, do you, does that enter into your considerations about your music at all? It didn't, no. It didn't, uh, it might enter after the fact, but uh, mainly I was always concerned about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was trying, it was, and the way that I was doing it. So yeah. that, um, I think that even though I wasn't involved with uh, what I'm now calling meditation. Um, I was always interested in the process that I was going through in order to make them the music mm -hmm. or to make the work. So it was how I, how I was approaching it that was important to me. And I was always interested in what what the result was, but it came through. You know, it would come through the task somehow. So I didn't. I never set out to to make a sad piece, <laughs> although it might be that. Yeah. It might be that. Um, or it might be many, many different things, which are ambiguous. Which was what I was very interested in, ambiguity. Mm -hmm. But you. I mean, does your when you when you look at your music, inevitably you have to do that at some point. When you look at your music, do you does it occur to you that it represents something that you can describe and that you and that you could want to change away from? I mean, for instance, Terry says that he wants now for his music only to be uh, what he calls positive or uh, he wants it to give only good feelings, right? And and that sort of reminds. I mean, it could be that if your music came from, if if your music came uh, from some attitude that was, say, sad, you know, 
that, and, and if you looked at your music in retrospect, you might be constantly trying to, you know, to leave that. Mm -hmm. do, do you do you ever identify your music in that way, or is it? Okay, that uh, that's an interesting one. Um, going back to Rose Mountain, Slow Runner. Um, certainly, I, I would I would resonate with Terry. Terry Riley and his feeling of wanting a positive, mm -hmm. to be positive, and uh, but again, I'm pro approaching it through my attitude and uh, the task, you know. And I talked about um, the emotional uh, state, what would what would come mm -hmm. through that task. So then, again, it's work on myself. work on myself which uh, would result in, the results yeah. would be positive in, yeah it'd be in, yeah. in the form of improvement or something I mean you yeah. could say you uh -huh. improve your yeah okay. yeah I, I definitely feel that and I didn't know if I wondered if it was I, I thought you must feel it too because you you uh, you, you, you you give the appearance of welcoming change it seems to me you're very fluid you know well um yes i, I welcome change although i find it very painful mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we, we agree to do these things like grief <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> uh, one of our most popular, I think. One is complete. You know. we'll appreciate. Of course, the last time you did it, I, I wore the, I wore the toenail polish for two weeks. Just to let it wear off, sort of? Yeah. I, I thought it looked good in my karate class. <laughs> <laughs> Little touch of flash. Yeah. Really, really flashy on the snap kicks. <laughs> it's just like being kicked by a Christmas tree, isn't it? Field, you want to? It's fun. <laughs> I'm going to have to
two people can help you on their knees. You to hold the back. Hold the back. Like this, right here. Drop your nails backwards. Now it won't be in the road, but start from back here. Pinching anywhere? No. No pinching. No pinching. That's good. It feels very cool, actually. Oh, good. Do you have any more questions for me, Bob? Well, I was wondering if, 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 uh, if what you are feeling. If, if you could identify the source of what you're feeling and sort of explain why everybody always does that. I mean, as long as, you know, it seems like as long as we've known about ourselves, we've always been involved in whatever that thing is that's happening. And... And there must there must be a reason for that. I mean, you know, it's, um, you know yeah. what I mean? You're talking about the character that's developing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not. I don't mean to. I no. What I didn't mean to refer to that even. What I was what I was asking you was whether you could just describe if you could describe your feelings. You know. Right. Right now. Yeah. My feelings right now. That would because they'd be so universal. No? Well, no, no, my feeling right now. When I asked you the question, I was in need of of uh, a stimulus. Yeah, yeah. I was in need of a stimulus, and I felt that um, I needed something to to help me to continue to talk. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, yeah, but you know, can I? Do you, do you understand a little bit what I mean? No, I think you have to explain it to me. Well. In, if you if you took if if there was some way that you could have uh, if you if there was some way you could have a videotape of the way the as of a da daily life in the Aztecs or a videotape of like daily life you name it you know any any culture that then the videotape would always show. It would always show the same thing, wouldn't it? It would show people changing themselves in some way. And I was wondering if you, if if you could identify that, if you could explain that feeling. Why, why do we do that? Why do we make these changes? Yeah. Why do we do the changes? Well, um, 
my immediate response is to learn more, is to learn something, yeah. is to move, you know, and to and to feel the movement. Do you feel as in in the situa in the, exactly the situation you're in now? Do you feel somehow lighter than you felt before? Lighter? Lighter, yes. Or more substantial or less, you know what I mean? Um, being, being in the interview situation, being in this situation uh, yeah. of operations uh, are being performed. Yeah. yeah, there's a performance going on yeah. out, outside of what we're engaged in. Yeah. And um, um, I, can, I can feel myself changing, yes. I can feel myself changing inside as we talk. Yeah. And I can, as the, as the interview expands, and I remember how we began, and I, I feel the change that uh, that that has occurred with you. You know, the initial uh, sort of discomfort of, of finding how to send her on the inter on the interview or on the talk. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's not getting in your eye, is it? No. That's okay. It's all right. Um, a lot of my early work was uh, involved with improvisation, and it was involved in putting myself into context or finding ways to make sounds that I didn't understand or I didn't know how to do. Okay. And I found that it was having set the conditions of such nature that moved me the most, changed me the most, having to learn how to deal with those so that uh, now I might choose a very uncomfortable situation. Excuse me. Okay. Eyelashes on now, so I need you to look this way. In order to affect that uh, and affect a change. Because, of course, the tendency is to seek out uh, more comfortable situations and activities. But I've never been satisfied in my work if I find that I'm becoming too comfortable with it.
if you if you were asked oh boy if you were asked to give some advice to young artists these days could you give it could i give it yeah um well i could only uh i mean do you do we oh well there was, yeah <laughs> Advice to the young artists. <laughs> I think that I would I would find I'd find that very uncomfortable if if I were asked to advise young artists. I mean it, in yeah. that way. Say do you have advice for young artists? Did you open your eyes. Open, open, look up, up, up. Great, 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 great. I think the only thing that I could do would be to reveal my own experience. But then, uh, I don't think that I could find. Uh, I I I didn't recognize good advice until until after I'd gone beyond it. Yeah. So that that's a. I understand. You look back and you recognize that you had good advice, you had bad advice. I hit you in the head. I know. Okay. I think I feel uncomfortable with the that position. You know, the position. Are, are you ever asked for advice? I mean, in that sense. Uh, I think that it happens directly sometimes and indirectly. Yeah. Indirectly, people who look and want to look at you and, and uh, find out what you're doing, and so that the your behavior is is uh, is the advice. Whether, however, you're behaving. So. Feels like it might jump off. <laughs> How are we on time? We've got about seven minutes left. Simply divine, I don't see. Up, up, up. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, don't worry. We we've got more time. Don't you know? All right. It's okay. Stretch the tape.
get ready now to do a change. All right. Well, we uh, we, we have about four minutes, but you know we can go we can go to the other we can go to the other uh, tape because we have we have about 20 minutes on that tape. No, so don't worry. You know we could do that. How about that? Yeah. yeah. We could just carry on. do your shirt, so I'll have to take off the mic. Um, yeah, why don't we, uh, we're almost out of time on this one, so we could, uh, uh, yeah, perhaps we could just start the, the next tape with, uh, with that other part, would, it, would that be all right? Yeah, then we then I don't have to worry about that technical thing. Let's see if you can some help here, and I need for you to hold the back. Hold the back. Hold this right here. Stop your nails backwards. Now it won't feel until I'll start. Start from back here. Anywhere? No. No pension. No Warm? Hmm? Is it warm? Oh, uh, but I mean, 
It feels very cool, actually. Oh, good. Do you have any more questions for me, Bob? Well, I was wondering if, 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 uh, if what you are feeling, if, if you could identify the source of what you're feeling and sort of explain why everybody always does that. I mean, as long as, you know, seems like as long as we've known about ourselves, we've always been involved in whatever that thing is that's happening. And, and there must there must be a reason for that. I mean, you know, you know yeah. what I mean? You're talking about the character that's developing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I don't mean to, I, you know what, I didn't mean to refer to that even. What I was, what I was asking you was whether you could just describe, if you could describe your feelings, you know. Right, right now. Yeah. My feelings right now. That would because they'd be so universal. No? Well, no, no, my feeling right now. When I asked you the question, I was in need of of uh, a stimulus. Yeah, yeah. I was in need of a stimulus, and I felt that um, I needed something to to help me to continue to talk. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, yeah, but you know, can I, do, you, do you understand a little bit what I mean? No, I think you have to explain it to me. Well, in, if, you, if you took, if, if there was some way that you could have, uh, if, you, if there was some way you could have a videotape of the way the Aztec, of a da daily life in the Aztecs, or a videotape of like, daily life, you name it, you know, any, any culture that, then the videotape would always show it would always show the same thing, wouldn't it? It would show people changing themselves in some way. And I was wondering if you if if you could identify that if you could explain that feeling. Why why do we do that? Why do we make these changes? Yeah. Why do we do the changes? Well um my immediate response is to learn more is to learn something yeah. is to move you know, and to and to feel the movement do you feel as in in the situa in the, exactly the situation you're in now do you feel somehow lighter than you felt before lighter lighter yes or more substantial or less you know what i mean um Being being in the interview situation, being in this situation, uh, yeah. uh, operations uh, are being performed. Yeah. yeah. There's a performance going on yeah. uh, outside of what we're engaged in. Yeah. And um, um, I can I can feel myself changing. Yes. I can feel myself changing inside as we talk. Yeah. And I can, as the as the interview expands, and I remember how we began, and I I feel the change that uh, that that has occurred with you, you know, the initial uh, sort of discomfort of, of finding how to center on the inter on the interview or on the talk. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. not getting in your eye, is it? No. That's okay? It's all right. Okay. It's coming along. <laughs> I like the color. Thank you. 
um, a lot of my early work was uh, involved with improvisation. And it was involved in putting myself into context or finding ways to make sounds that I didn't understand or I didn't know how to do. Okay. And I found that it was having set the conditions of such nature that moved me the most, changed me the most having to learn how to deal with those. So that uh, now I might choose a very uncomfortable situation. Excuse me. Okay. I'm actually telling them something. I need you to look this way. In order to affect that, uh, and affect the change. Because, of course, the tendency is to seek out uh, more comfortable situations and activities. But I've never been satisfied in my work if I find that I'm becoming too comfortable with it. If you if you were asked oh boy if you were asked to give some advice to young artists these days could you give it could I give it yeah um, well I could only uh, I mean do you do we oh well there was, yeah. <laughs> Advice to the young artists. <laughs> I think that I would I would find I'd find that very uncomfortable if if I were asked to advise young artists. I mean it, in yeah. that way. Say do you have advice for young artists? Did you open your eyes? Open, open, look up, 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 up. Great, 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 great. I think the only thing that I could do would be to reveal my own experience. But then, uh, I don't think that I could find. Uh, I, I, I didn't recognize good advice until, until after I'd gone beyond it. Yeah. So that that's a. I you look back and you recognize that you had good advice, you had bad advice. I think I feel uncomfortable with the, that position, you know, the position.
Are, are you ever asked for advice? I mean, is that the sense? Uh, I think that it happens directly sometimes and then indirectly. Yeah. Indirectly. People who look and want to look at you and, and uh, find out what you're doing and so that the your behavior is is uh, is the advice, however you're behaving. Feels like it might jump off. <laughs> Were you aware of uh, Were you aware of discovering that uh, were, were you how to say this? It seems to me that, that from the the way you described your music of a while ago that there must have been a time when uh, when you weren't thinking about the way you discovered Rose, the way you described Slow Mountains, uh, Rose Mountain Slow Runner. So there must have been a time when you discovered when you replaced that process, w when you replaced the older process with the newer one. And was that was that like a very sudden sort of experience, or did or did it? Or, did it, or is it still ambiguous for you? No, it's uh, it, there was a there was a slow process. There was a slow oh. evolutionary kind of process that took place, and I was very conscious of the crossing point or the change. And uh, I can characterize it by saying that um, earlier uh, through the through the 60s and in up, up to the end of the 60s, I was involved in, a, in improvisation, improvisatory work. And... Um, Slow in, just in, 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 okay. And, and improvising in the way that I was so trying to find ways to, uh, so that I would not know, not know how I was, how does it make sense that finding conditions which would be a stimulus in that in that respect and um, but at the same time I found myself making intentional sounds so I was intending to make a certain kind of music in that time Polly could you chest down okay um, but Gradually, I became more and more interested in the process of, of listening, and listening so as I was a part, uh, almost. And there came a time when I was no longer improvising, but I was attending to a task. Yeah. And uh, I call it meditation because I was a uh, dweller. Careful. Careful. Staying with a particular thing. And as I say, trying to lose my intention in order to find a different mode. 
so that there came a point where I realized that that was what was taking place, indeed. Yeah. And it was different, it was different territory. And the feelings that I had in making music or in doing meditation were different. And I think it was more, it was, it, it related to uh, Terry's feeling of one being more positive. I wanted to, I wanted to work to have that feeling that you mentioned of, about the greeting meditation, a welcome. I'm going to put place. the mic, excuse me, back on you. No pinch, do they? No. Okay. Uh, have, have you felt in yourself uh, 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 can you see in yourself something uh, something that's historical, something that has been with you for a long time, some some overwhelming force, you know, that's within you. I mean what you know, we're 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 taught that those forces exist, that that uh people might have lived their whole life uh struggling against uh, economic economic uh the uh, economic problems, you know, I mean, yes. a, a, des a despotic situation or something like that, and, and we have we have heroes who who have spent their whole life uh, uh, working with that idea. And I was wondering if there is an idea like that in your life. Yes, I think so. I think so, and I. It showed up in my work as a. There's a, a dualism. Um, very often, the the theater pieces that I've done would be quite bizarre. There's many uh, bizarre and say comical aspects or mixed. Uh, mixed feelings in the in the theatrics, and then a, a move, uh, then a change into some kind of a, say a purely musical activity. That and somehow that the the pull of the theatrics would set up a kind of disorientation, and then and then there would be again a crossing point, and then the music. That occurs in in some of my pieces. In within that one piece, yeah. there are both things. Right, yeah, both know. things. Yes, and um, it, it, within myself, I mean, there's the environmental pull. Um, uh, you, you mentioned struggle, mm -hmm. right? Kind of um, feelings about myself, say, 
the way I want to be, as opposed to the way the environment or the social environment intends for me to be, and that kind of pulling. Um, and my, I think that has been that has been a, a, a sort of an overwhelming force. I'm trying to keep myself centered and to, to meet that. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's represented in what I've been saying about the improvisations and uh, the situations. Yeah, I heard, I, I'm, I, I'm very interested in that. I, your I, your, your a statement about the improvisation because I didn't see any of those and I, I had heard about them and I didn't know how they fit in, mm -hmm. in what you were doing. Well, all the time that I was working with electronic music, for instance, the, the whole task for me was to find a way that I could improvise and I could improvise with uh, continuity. Um, and when I was working there was not um, uh, synthesizers, I mean, you know, the Lucla system or the Moog system weren't in existence and so I was working with uh, equipment which wasn't really designed for or for playing in the in the way that I've been talking about or wanting to do, wanted to do. So I had to find a way to play the studio, which was the old uh, classical studio, so to speak. Yeah. 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 So I, I had to find, I found ways of... Um, setting up very unstable situa unstable electronic situations to work with in the studio, <laughs> which would, would give me, uh, again, this, this condition of having to understand as I went along, or not understand, but to do. Understand. <laughs> you understand? Just now, just this second. You know? <laughs> Have you gotten the message? I just got it. You got the message. Thanks for answering my question. <laughs> so. Should we stop? <laughs>